I probably curse more <clears throat> about liberals than I do when I stub my toe. <laughs> I swear to God. That's the truth. Does anybody else have that where they um, – it's got to be a thing that everybody does, even on the left to the right and everybody. You ever just curse at just stupidity? It's just like – like I can't be alone in that. Somebody stupid, you just got to be like, God, you know, in here in Texas, I wish I grew up here. Uh, they have a saying, instead of saying, what a fucking moron, you say, oh, bless his heart. Because <laughs> he's so stupid, he's probably going to get rolled over by a, by a, what do they call those things? The steamroller or whatever? Constantly, says Mark, yeah. God, I mean, that's, you know, my biggest issue, really. If, if anything gives me Tourette's, it's morons. Fucking A, man. <laughs> All right, everybody. Uh, good morning. And uh, we've got just seven minutes until the market opens. Uh, taking a look at the market. <clears throat> we are opening already. Uh, gapping up, open just beneath yesterday's low, which was also the day before's low. Same low. Uh, so that's kind of a top. If you think of a bridge, when we get to the top, the top bricks – have a bottom when you get to a top sometimes instead of just like a v type of reversal you can create that kind of bridge on you know across the top and it forms a bottom of the top if you will right and so that's where we are and we're pushing up against it and it will be uh likely that today either we will doji around that area or go into um, yesterday's area a little bit and then pull back, break low, and then go red on the day or something to that effect. Today's not going to be a progress day. It's probably going to be progress to the pullback side of things, if not a complete uh, bloodbath, <laughs> which is possible. It's definitely possible because um, the smarter the trader is, the more sensitive they are to seeing that there's the gains period is over. And uh, uh, Panic creates more panic, right? So uh, that's probably what's going to happen today. If we look at the S and P 500, it's even worse. It's even worse. We're gapping uh, down uh, below yesterday's close and low, but we're not below two days ago's low. Over on the Dow Industrials, it's actually opening in side yesterday's uh, candle. So industrials are kind of like stronger right now, but growth stocks are kind of faltering. If growth and the S&P 500 both have a negative day, it's going to drag down the industrials as well. But right now, industrials showing a lot of relative strength. So now might be the time to be uh, – watching industrials since they're showing strength at this in this area uh, over the next one or two days trying to find an industrial uh, that could be breaking out or have a pattern that was basing and it's right ready to break out that might be something that breaks out after a, this pullback over the next uh, week or two so I know that GE is already on its way though uh, so maybe not GE but something like that uh, perhaps, let's see, Boeing. Yeah, Boeing's kind of breaking out of a top right around here. So, you know, keep, an on, keep an eye on the space where there's a lot of relative strength. But as far as growth stocks go, uh, yeah, they're pulling back pretty hard, and so is the S&P 500. Let's see, what is Tesla doing this morning? Yeah, Tesla's way down. It was at 920 at the close yesterday, and it hit as low as 908 this morning. Taking a look at that on the daily chart, it looks like so. And uh, Apple, those two have really been defining the S&P 500 and the Qs lately. Apple's actually been just stronger than the entire growth market. Apple is inside yesterday's uh, candle. It's not below yesterday's low. All right, we have three minutes to the open. Um, VIX is now in the 20s again. Rates hit 29. They're over 20, 2.9 rather, 2.9% on the 10-year Oil's at 87, hit as low as 86 overnight. Gold at 1767. So we're getting a lot of asset um, correction right now across the markets. 
Bitcoin is at 23,600. You know, everything's sort of topped or correcting just a little bit. We're definitely off of this rally. We're definitely off of this rally. All right. And then as far as uh, momentum movers this morning, obviously we have BBBY. All Fubo also is moving up, showing some strength. And we have EAR, E-A-R. We're also watching QNRX. And uh, as we were talking about this morning, Blue Apron is moving around. I think that's probably just a um, earnings result. Let's see. No, it's not. It's not an earnings result. But since earnings, it has gone para parabolic, really, every day with expanding volatility. Uh, I don't know what the news is uh, over there, but that's a pretty nice uh, – pattern to be on watch for perhaps it's a short squeeze uh, going on on apron aprn so uh let's keep an eye on it uh today because who knows if if that's what's going on we, we could be pushing up past 12 dollars in no time so keep an eye on uh, aprn if it breaks over 680 that's the pivot to watch for uh to hopefully give it enough momentum to break over seven which is the pre-market high so that whole area 687 right in there that's where it starts to get hot right now it's 645. all right we got a minute and 10 seconds before the market opens somebody's asking about hood yeah there's uh, i can't go into a deep analysis right now that'd be later in the show right now we're preparing for the morning market momentum basically day trades Here's a look at the uh, pre-market chart on uh, BBBY. Definitely on the short side right now, but let's see what happens after the open. We got 40 seconds until the open. VRAX. Somebody says, but I don't know if you're talking about for a day trade. Yeah, you must be talking for a day trade. I'm sorry, for a swing trade. So we'll check that out later. Thank you for the tip, VRAX. All right, here we go. Ten seconds. Oh, there goes APRN. There goes APRN. It's going up to 678 right before the open. 683 APRN, where the trade is at this morning, possibly. 683. Okay, 676, 72 at the open and starting to drop. 672. Definitely showing some potential over on APRN. Hey, pal, giving me some kind of a signal here. Let me go take a look. Nah, and then upstart. Nah, uh, text. Jern, no. Cop, no. Good. All right, we're up to date now. And let's watch. Uh, so it looks like BBB, BBBY dropped quickly to 26 and 25. Oh, what do you think about plug? Okay, let's see. Plug opened gap down to around 28. Mac, I don't, you know, if you're holding something, um, give it the first five minutes, and then if it's not going in your direction, make a decision. There you go. It's like the best I could tell you on that because it depends on where you're in. Uh, BBBY is starting to come up right now. Look at that. The dip is being bought. We are looking like we're definitely heading over 30. Um, BBBY, BBBY. Like a lightning rod off of the open. So much momentum. That shows a – wow, look at – BBBY is 2980, 2990, 30. BBBY just broke over 30. A lot of movement there. Uh, it's pulled back to 2740. There's another chance to get in. It seems like for these mo uh, for everybody's uh, trying to uh, play this. Certainly a lot of volatility at the open. That's going to make the options contracts volatility in their pricing expand a bit. 
has any options going on BBBY. Yeah, if uh, somebody says buy puts, if you were to buy puts instead of just shorting or uh, buying shares, if you were to buy puts, uh, you want to buy them deep in the money, but liquid. So somewhere where the volume is happening because you're going to get killed by the volatility. Premium is going to crush you. You're not going to make money on it. The, the move potential is already priced in. Uh, aprons now at 670. So it's just hanging out uh, right around the open. 630 would be where you'd want to drop apron. So about 30, 40 cents of risk for that trade. BBBY messing around with the $29 level, up and down, up and down. The market itself, let's go take a quick look at that. The market itself is roughly sideways off the open on the queues. Little bit of a, a micro uptrend on the S&P 500. We're only three minutes into the session. Bit of an uptrend, on, micro uptrend intraday on uh, the Dow, on the industrials. Uh, JCSE, JCSE coming up. If it can get over the high of three dollars, it could explode. JCSE. Right now it's at 284 and pumping. JCSE. Max says Cog T is moving. Cog T, but how liquid is it? Not very liquid, but it is moving. We're right on that. Let's take a look at Target and what's happening on Target. All right, targets breaking lows, so that's a short target. Short TGT. I'm sure. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, no, Walmart is not following, but target I guess missed on revs or something. Uh, something in the ER earnings release that people did not like, and it's breaking the pre-market lows at 173.50. It's now at 171.50. You're already two dollars in the down move. On target. Let's get back over to BBBY, take a look at what's going on over there. BBBY rejecting off that $30 level and creating a um, bit of a base in the 27 level. So the Qs, so S&P 500 are starting to move up, uh, and the Qs are still kind of going sideways, but they're catching up with this idea of going up a little bit off the open. It looks like this. Bit of an uptrend happening now on the Qs. <clears throat> it, you know, all three markets have the room. You know, they could uh, go inside of yesterday's candle and it'd be still meaningless movement. <clears throat> I feel like that's not going to last too long. All right, Cog T, let's go back over there. Cog T definitely flying. Look at the two-minute chart. We only have three bars on that. Volume, volume too low. Volume too low, Mac, for everybody else to be trading that. You can mess around with it. That's just too low. Not liquid enough. TME, uh, yeah, I think that uh, that's not in play yet. I think it's a dead cat bounce. AMC moving up a little bit, a eh, little bit, 2%. You've been holding? Okay, all right. Well, yeah. All right, BBBY definitely uh, basing at 27.50. Which way it's going to go from there, we'll be curious to see. JCSC getting really close to coming up and over uh, this sort of pivot point at 2.8. It's already over it. Uh, hopefully it can get over uh, $3 and push from there. Q. 
QNRX. Let's take a look at that. Yeah, Fubo is falling at the open. Now, there's no trade really happening on Fubo. Market pulling back now. Checking on in a couple of my trades. <clears throat> I love this one, GLNG. It's called Goler LNG, liquefied natural gas, but it's GLNG. For me, it's like, go long. <laughs> what is the best stock for the future? Uh, fucking probably if that's the kind of thing you're asking. I don't know. It depends on what you're trying to ask with that, but maybe GE and Apple. It just depends on how long you're talking. And it depends on how much money you're trying to make. <clears throat> like, are you trying to be safe and invest for your future? So 5, 10, 20 year time frame, or are we talking one month, six months, two years, one year? It's so, it can be so different. So it's really impossible to answer that kind of a question. I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. <laughs> Five years. Um, Any of the tried and trues, Apple, GE, Microsoft. I'd stay away from Meta right now, you know. Don't go with anything too risky. Go with the tried and trues. So for five years, you know, now is a great time to get into those. Potentially. Again, educational purposes only, not financial advice, technically, because I, I can't give financial advice because I have no idea of your personal financial situation. I don't know. You know, that's something that uh, you'd have to consult with a, a real financial advisor for. Somebody asked me to take a look at Tesla. Tesla's hanging in there. The market is turning around and it looks like it might go red. It did a rare, a very deep retrace of that strong rally that that happened which tells you that that was bullshit if you have a hundred percent retrace of a strong rally that strong rally ain't no strong rally it's trying to grab liquidity for a move down and it is bullshit all right jcsc is now over three it's at 307 so with that two dollar and eighty cent entry that puts us at almost a ten percent move since call out very nice. Ear. Ear has moved up and over 2.75, uh, which was the pre-market highs. And that's where it is right about right now, 280. Ear, E-A-R. The GE's really turned around. It's not been a dog at all. The last year or two have been really turned around. I think you're thinking about the market. The market's been a dog. I think you are confused, sir. <laughs> Ear at 287 and pushing. JCSE hitting 318. Blue Apron is at $6. It really uh, failed out at 6.30. That was the end of that trade. 6.30 was the bottom of that. Fubo not happening. No, yeah, no. The historic notion of GE uh, went into total turnaround. Over the last few years, uh, they adapted, adopted an entirely new approach to their business, and it's you know resulting in almost 10x valuation than they used to be valued. No, GE is pretty hot. And by the way, uh, he was asking about a five-year type of timeline. So. <laughs> That's true, Brianne. Why, what did you say? Our play on Hershey looking good. 
following through. Well, splits don't mean much, Chowder. Everybody wants to be a hundred dollars a share. Uh, ear now almost uh, getting to three dollars. It's at two ninety two. No, Hershey is moving, uh, Benjamin. Definitely, uh, Benjamin. Depending on what kind of returns you're going after, or what kind of risks you're trying to take, um, if you're finding something too slow for you. Uh, yeah, you know, go ahead and get into something else. That's your own prerogative, you know, how you use your money. But, you know, definitely make your money work for you. However, Hershey's is just a candy company. We're looking for like a one or two week move on Hershey of maybe 10 or 20 percent. So uh, you took that trade. Maybe you didn't know that's what we're trying to get out of things in the high growth section, high growth swing trades. Uh, but that's what we expect from something like that. Uh, what about what's your comment about Warren Buffett, Mac? At home, so Zoom isn't loading. Oh, Brian. Oh, okay. <clears throat> yeah, I definitely do pay attention a lot more to uh, the members of our group than necessarily social media comments. Like here we go. Manuel uh, says, "Check out M A N U," because I guess it's his stock. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Oh, because of Manchester United comment from uh, from Elon Musk. Yeah, yeah, it popped at the open, but it's pulling back. Which is the most aggressive? The most aggressive trading style is probably uh, a high frequency scalping. High frequency scalping. Uh, you can make over a thousand trades per day. That is the most aggressive style. Uh huh. Yeah. Everyone wants their shares to a hundred dollars, except Warren Buffett. Oh, because his are like hundreds of thousands. Yeah. It's like a club. You can't even own a share. It's like being part of a um a country club. Ear at two ninety, BBBY at twenty six fifty. The market made a new low. I believe we're red. Yep. Market is now putting in a red candle off of the lows. Uh, that is probably the reversal signal we need. We need to see the Dow go underwater. DIA. If the DIA can turn red and, of course, S&P 500, we've already got the Q's growth pulling back, then um, we'll – will likely correct and pull back for a few days. We can say that that was definitively the top. Rev, somebody asked about Rev. I don't know if it's moving as a day trade. It's up 11 or 12% this morning. No, there's not much going on on Rev. It could be a good uh, swing trade. Evlon. You know, that company is just all brand. We, we talked about Revlon before. It has no value except its brand. Cog G hitting 17. Nice, Mac, or whoever that was. Ear popped over $3, hit $3.17 EAR. S&P 500, the Qs and the Dow, the market, uh, bouncing off of a, a short-term bottom right now. Intraday bottom. All right, I'm going to go check on some other holdings. Counts.
Yeah, so you know, it just take take ch- tends to you know depends on what you're trying to do, Benjamin. Yeah, I mean, it just depends on what you want to do. There's lots of different kinds of trading styles, you know, and we have them all here. There's value stock uh, flipping. There's um, swing trading. There's three different styles of swing trading going on and plus lots of alerts from other uh, traders doing swing trades over in the alert section. And then there's day swinging, day trading, um, day high frequency day trading and then high frequency day scalping and there's and then of course there's investing and then there's macro also which is you know going after uh things like the dollar or um rates rates or oil or uh, a sector like energy or staples or you know economic factors and then there's hedging, and uh, there's just so many different ways. So, Benjamin, I don't know what you want to do. You do. You know what you want to do. I don't, but I certainly can help you uh, find how to do what you want to do uh, through some maybe private lessons or if you've taken my market mastery, you know, go in there. It covers a lot of topics. Um, and I can certainly, you know, understand your style more if you tell me what you're interested in. Some people just want to blow all their money on red, you know, those kinds of people, they're in here too, probably. Uh, but I don't, you know, advocate that style too much, very risk um, controlled type of trader. So uh, my trades tend to be accompanied by either hedging or most definitely defined risk. But, you know, you might uh, find like Yahoo Lotto type plays in some of the other alerts that go on in here. They exist. Can you look at it, please? Erax, what about it, man? I mean, all you've been talking about is it. What about it? What about it? I'm looking at it. What about it? What do you want me to tell you? Is there, you know, what do you not know or what do you know? What do you not know that you want me to help you with or what do you know you want me to know? Primed for a squeeze low float monkeypox test kits. Okay, but it looks like a piece of shit. So, all right, thank you. Yeah, we're just not going to talk about it anymore because it's a piece of shit. But, you know, if it starts to happen, I'll know about it. You know why? Because all of my alerts and all of my systems and everybody in my group will let me know when something's happening on something. When it's not happening, nobody gives a fuck. All right? Okay, good. Okay, you have a huge thesis, so run your own group then. I mean, or come into my group and let's talk. But, like, what are you doing? You're pumping a piece of shit. Okay, I'm not interested. If it does something, I'll be interested. All right, if it does something, I'll be interested. Otherwise, you know, go back to your uh, taking your drugs, man. (laughs) Other than it sucks ass, we're not interested. You know, I mean, outside of the fact that it sucks ass, we're not interested. That's what Don Drell said, (laughs) one of our members. All right, so, you know, it's up to you if you want to shut up, uh, but you can keep talking if you want. Just like, we're not interested. Thanks so much. Thank you. Piece of crap. <laughs> you know, with all due respect, I like where you're coming from. I like that you have a thesis and you found some corner of the market, but nobody knows who the fuck you are. You know, you could be some brokey just sitting on some couch somewhere eating to- toast tortilla chips in your mother's basement and you have this stock you're trying to tell us about so what it looks like a piece of shit (laughs) i don't know we don't know we have no idea who you are you don't even have a profile photo all we know you're elon musk's enemy (laughs) 
<laughs> and for that, we hate you. <laughs> if, if we don't, we don't like anybody who doesn't like Elon Musk. I can tell you that right now. If you don't like Elon Musk, get GTFAO. All right, this market is trying to make a new low right now. <laughs> and uh, uh, it's finding a little bit of a Some people prefer to remain somewhat anonymous. So why do I think VRAX is shit? Um, because it's not anything good and all it has done is bad. Number one. Okay. And uh, some people prefer to remain anonymous. This guy's Warren Buffett in here with his, with his G two fifty with his random profile with no profile picture, and uh, he's trying to be anonymous and trying to help us out. Uh, well, okay, maybe you're anonymous for other reasons. Fine, I understand. Maybe you live in Belize and um, trying to evade the law. Okay, so what do you? <laughs> what the fuck? If you want us to take you seriously, you can't be like hiding behind rocks and uh, in who you are and shit. You prefer to remain anonymous than you prefer to remain a worthless piece of shit is what happens. So, you know, be, have, show some fucking backbone, get out in front of the world, and maybe we can respect what you have to say. Come on. You're getting way too much attention in here. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye. <laughs> Apple, yes, doing good. Apple's keeping the market from dropping. <laughs> uh, thanks, Ricky. Uh, thanks, Kevin. Oh, my God. These people, I tell you. Listen to me, they say. I, you know, I, I'm putting all my money into GME. Yeah, how'd that work out for everybody? The S&P 500 is coming up off that bottom pretty strongly right now. It's showing a bottom reversal at least at this time. <clears throat> and uh, the Qs, Qs not quite there yet, and rejecting off of that concept. And the Dow. Holding steady, holding steady. The Evan, do stand up. Oh <laughs> uh, man, you know that was. It's kind of funny you say that because that was like my eighth grade final project in social studies. People were supposed to uh, pick a profession, and everyone, you know, one guy picked like I'm a car and you know manufacturer, and they did Ford, you know, another person, and they talked about assembly line and everything. Everyone had this historical profession. It was oh, astronaut, this or that. Everybody had these really uh, respectable uh, positions in society. I picked comedian. And <laughs> I started in a chair, right? And I said, uh, and I and I started there, right? And then I stood up. I said, I'm a stand-up comedian. <laughs> then I kicked the chair out of the way, and I started my bit. <laughs> so it was a nice eighth grade moment. It was one of those Napoleon Dynamite moments. <laughs> I had, you know, I was like the uh, ultra reject in that school, I tell you. But when it came to comedy, that's what people came to me for. <laughs> Daily chart. All right, let's take a look at a couple of things that I'm taking uh, a couple of things I need to take a look at here. Nautilus. Uh, I got into yesterday. I got into. Um, I'll tell you guys something that uh, I'm going to be announcing soon. Is that uh, on next Monday, this company VIOT is reporting earnings, and I've been getting into a heavy position on them. And that is because they're valued at about five dollars, and they've had very consistent uh, revenues, earnings, good margins, good operations. The only reason they're really down is because of the way the economy went and the fact that they're a Chinese company. And it's very hard to invest in Chinese companies. It really is uh, because you can't believe their their numbers. Um, 
but I have worked up a thesis on it, and I, I believe that if you were going to fake your numbers, their numbers would not be the numbers that you would fake. Uh, they look like they have very honest and uh, stable numbers. And so I believe the only reason it is down from its valuation of five, so it's about a five Xer, um, is because <clears throat> it is Chinese. And the whole stigma of the Chinese stocks right now is at its worst. So I feel as a value play, it could be a place to put some money for a while until it comes into um, – better valuation or the economy comes to turn around. And what they do is they do, they make smart, smart things uh, like a Roomba type of thing. But over in China, I believe the name of their, the brand, the, their forward facing brand name is Xiaomi X I O M I. And I'm sure I'm pronouncing it wrong. It's probably Xiaomi or something like that. And they make all kinds of smart home things. Um, think of like a smart toasters, smart refrigerators, smart microwaves, uh, smart devices, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I, I believe they're really just in a slump right now on sales, uh, on the sales end, uh, because of the way the economy is worldwide. I think they're a great operation. They've proven that before. In the past, their revenues have been quite wonderful. So... That's something that this week uh, I have been allocating into. I already talked a little bit about it in the value investing section in our group. V-I-O-T, Carl, V-I-O-T. And, um, you know, if it even doubles, great. Uh, but the earnings are coming out in a couple of days on Monday. Regardless to whether or not those are going to be manipulated, I think that's going to release some tension and worries about the stock. Uh, because I believe those numbers are going to come in just, you know, no surprises, no no problems. Uh, but what will come is an earnings call with some guidance. And I believe it's my thesis that worldwide the economic meltdown or whatever you want to call it has already bottomed six weeks ago. So on that thesis, I think that this could be a, a good opportunity. I'm also in like seven other names like that, by the way. So yeah, full disclosure, I am in this VIOT, and one of the reasons why I haven't said anything about it is because I don't want anybody crowding that trade. Because I think it's an I, the only reason I'm telling you this really is because um, you're live with me right now. I'm not really typing it up anywhere. It's not or, you know um, a, a megaphone type announcement. If if anybody with big money finds out about this VIOT, I think it's a great opportunity um, that has been greatly ignored in the corner of the market. Another thing I like about the chart, by the way, is how flat it is right now. So that's, you could say it's a little bit less worrisome. But I've defined the risk at about 45 cents or 40 cents. And you can read about it in my uh, value investing section on our member area. Let me see what I put the risk as. Risk is about 30% loss possibility, 30% loss on the downside, but it has about a 278% uh, reward on the reward side, possibly. Somebody said BBBY is halted. Yes. So I did post about it, and uh, you know, it hasn't gone anywhere yet. So it's still at a decent level, and I'm not interested in pumping it. Uh, we could not, myself, our group, and all the social media, all the broadcasts, and going after it daily would not be enough to pump it. So I'm not interested in pumping it. I'm interested in buying it because uh, over the next amount of time, I do believe it's going to come into valuation and that right now it's way below valuation. And just to give you a glance of like how uh, some of the work I do to value companies um, here is what I look at. This is my own custom built fundamentals uh, valuation uh, charting software uh, charting uh, that I put together. 
for myself, which tells me all about it. If it's in debt and it's, you know all of its cash flows, its earnings flows, different variation valuations, tangible asset values, book values, NCAV, net net, um, shares, dilutions, um, cash flows, uh, you, you know, you name it, a Ben Graham number, whatever you want, it's all in there. So, uh, and you don't see a lot of stocks with this kind of excellent looking fundamental history uh, that are this low in price and price. You now see this green line up here, 533, uh, this one right here, this top green line, that's where, that's its liquidated value. Here's its book value. Here's the Ben Graham number. At the worst, it's about $3.60 at the uh, but in liquidated value terms, even with discount, it's about five dollars and eighty cents. It's currently trading for a dollar fifty. It got hammered by this this ec economic meltdown that just happened. You know, by the macro, it got hammered by the macro. It's a normal good company that when the demand returns, when customers start buying smart products again, when the demand returns, it's going to be, you know. Could potentially be up there between four dollars and six dollars, and you know what? In the past, it's even gotten farther than that. It's gotten farther than valuation. It's gone as high as eighteen dollars when it was worth uh, six dollars previously. So you know it can go at a PE. It can go at a multiple in PE wise. So Viat and a couple other companies like that. Uh, you know, I also look at competitors and do some. Uh, and do some uh, behind the scenes um, work on that. But I, I, I posted that to the group, everybody. And uh, that's something that I'm secretly buying, secretly buying up. And uh, we'll see what happens, you know, because I want to get in before this next earnings release uh, because it has been bottoming. And I am concerned that in the next earnings release, anything positive might be said. <laughs> So, you know, I do not want to miss out on getting it at this price. That's where I'm at with that. So it depends. Like, Benjamin, you were asking, like, I think one of the reasons I went into that was uh, because, Benjamin, you were asking, like, you know, we do everything in this group from high-frequency scalping and trading to, uh, you know, like what I just said, which it could be something that takes a year to even pop. And we have to wait for the, uh, the company to, to turn around. There's lots of different ways to play the market. And um, all of them are right. And all of them are wrong for you. You know, it's like your own personal scenario is what tells you what you want to do like do you want to mostly invest and a little bit dabble in high risk or do you want to be all high risk and not invest at all there's people like that and there's everything in between and there's people that only invest there's people that are also in real estate there's people who are doing side hustles there's people who run a laundromat there's people who uh but but for the most part you know what we're all about what i'm all about helping you with is making sure that you are doing something to to put your money to work for you and that you're saving and that you're not spending more than you earn and that you have no debt or you're using debt to create passive income, uh, cash flow, you know, just like a business. And um, from there, there's so many different things you can do. So I don't know. I don't know, Benjamin, what you want to do. Would I rather buy stock or options in Viat? I don't think there are um, options available on Viat, but uh, let me check. First of all, no, no, there's no options on buy yet, but um, I would rather buy stock anyway, which is what I was going to say. Yeah, I'm sure I helped fill in some liquidity today with Viat. You know, that's definitely not why I'm talking about it. Understand that we'll never get the big, huge return and the big move we're looking for by being some kind of a pump. And and my philosophy on that, on how to play um, value plays, is until I can find something that has a higher multiple of return, 
that's where uh, you know the money is in the oven. You know the, the Viot's like an oven, right? And I won't put my money into it, right? If I can find another oven that cooks hotter, <clears throat> then I will take that money and put it over there, or take half of it and put it into the other oven. If I can find a couple of ovens that are really uh, look like worthwhile, I'll put them in a lot of them. But until until then, the philosophy is, uh, you know, concentrate. You know, keep the money where where you have the biggest opportunity. Then let's say it it goes up in value. Uh, you know, you're still in it, and unless you find another opportunity that has a higher multiple from where you're at now to where you're hoping it'll be, which might be a double at that point. If you find something else that has a higher multiple, then take half off, put it over there, convert it to a free ride. You know, you have a lot of options. Until when is it safe to stay in the oven? So see exactly. So like, let's take a look again. That's a good, great question. I guess we're flowing into uh, some educational information here now. So somebody asked, when is it okay to... Um, you know how long to stay in the oven. So look at this. Okay, Th this is what I like to see in a in a stock's fundamentals. This is just a few of the numbers. Okay, like maybe one tenth of the numbers that I pay attention to. But look at the, how this green stair stepping is going on. That's increased value. It's either it's a combination of book value, tangible value. Um, also in there is net current asset value. And um, Ben Graham value and a couple other different numbers are here. There's quite a few of them. However, look, you can see that it's never ha gone below value. Only recently has it gone below value. That's why we're looking at it. That's why I'm looking at it because it's below value. Not a lot of companies do that if they have good cash flows, good business models, good businesses. So if a good business is just going through a rut because nobody's buying because of that's the way the world is right now. And it went below value. You know, you might have something there. Now, your question was, until when is it safe to stay in the oven? So until it reaches value or close to value. If it goes above value, like what happened the other day on, I forget what it was, but another one where we made 35%. If it goes above value but then returns to value, you can cut at value because now you got what you hoped to get when you started putting in on that. So anytime until it reaches value, it's still got a baking room. It's still got room to bake in the oven, right? So if it pops way up, is it time to take profits? Only if you have something else of better multiple potential for your money should you take it off and put it onto the something else. Something else might come up of greater opportunity. And you can either take half and split it across or take a little or take some profits. Or there's You can do whatever you want to do. But the point is, until it reaches value, it's still, it's still not fully baked. So hopefully that answers your question, Lawrence. I don't even know if he's still there. Okay, you guys, we're 10 minutes after the hour. How's uh, BBBY doing? What's BBBY up to? So, like, for example, you go over to BBBY, and what's its valuation? So look at, you know, look at the fundamentals on BBBY. Its fundamental value has been dropping for years, dropping, dropping, dropping. It used to be worth uh, $21 per share. This is like, think of it like the bankruptcy value, the liquidated value. If if Bed Bath & Beyond went out of business, how much would it give all the stockholders per share? So it used to be, you know, $21. Now it's all the way down to worth less than $2. Um, if I, I even have to zoom out a little bit, it's actually negative. It's now in bankrupt territory. BBBY just went negative this last quarter in net asset value. So... You know, it used to have – so what I'm saying here over on BBBY is anything above that value is time to get out. You do not want to be holding BBBY except for what's happening here, which is trading it. You know, it's being day traded because it's it's a dying company. You know, this is a good area if possible for you to get short for you know, going into bankruptcy. But, you know, bankruptcy is uh, 
um, a risk too. You know, right now it's saying don't put your money on it because in bankruptcy, everyone loses all their money. They're in debt. They're in more debt than they have in value of things to, to liquidate at fire sale prices. You know, they could liquidate all their inventory for 25 to 50 uh, percent of its value in bankruptcy and all their assets liquidate everything they've got and they're underwater. So BBBY now is a next is a worse than worthless company. <laughs> so anyway, that's an example uh, of what it should not look like. All right, back to BBBY uh, day trade. All right, it's hanging out around 26.30. If it can break 28.50, it will uh, have the momentum and really fly. And don't forget your SQQQ. Nice for a swing leading up to ER. I was in nice, but I had to cut it yesterday. Dennis, hopefully you're still in it if it's doing good. Let me see. Oh, yeah, I had to cut yesterday uh, to make room for other things. Uh, pulled back a little too hard. Um, I needed some padding. Going into going into earnings, I want at least 10% padding of profits, you know, and uh, I couldn't get it, so I had to leave it there. All right, everybody. Uh, it's Wednesday, Wednesday morning. We've been uh, checking out the market for about 45 minutes now. It's going sideways, and um, I will meet you in the group. That's the morning session. Thank you very much for tuning in, everybody. I'll meet you in the group. You guys can hang out in the uh, Active Trader Lounge or in Member Chat or in Momentum. Those are some of the best places to hang out and then watch all the alerts as well. Yeah, thank you, Chowder. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Mike. Thanks, Carl. <laughs> Tomorrow night is class. All right, don't forget. Hey, Mike. Mike Dunsmore, thanks. All right, see you guys later. Have a good morning, everybody. I'll be scouring the market for opportunities behind the scenes.